अन मस्का अनटोल्ड पारसी स्टोरीज ऑफ लव हार्ट ब्रेक पेन ग्रीफ हैप्पीनेस लाफ्टर टीयर्स एंड ट्रायम्फ दिस इज द नॉन कन्फर्मिंग पारसी एंड यू आर लिसनिंग टू बन मस्का किस्से कहानियाँ बस स्टोरीज ऑफ अ पारसी बाय अ पारसी फॉर द वर्ल्ड टू लिसन चलो शुरू करिए आइए सुनते हैं नौशिर की आगे की कहानी एपिसोड फोर में ही एट फ्लैड फ्रॉम द रिहैब अलॉन्ग विथ हिज बिलोंगिंग्स विच वर एंट मच अ फ्यू पेयर ऑफ क्लोथ विच नो मोर फिट हिज थिनर फ्रेम हिज बुक्स पासपोर्ट एंड हर पिक्चर्स सम पार्ट्स वी वॉक ऑन एंड सम अपियर बिलो अवर ट्रेडिंग स्टेप्स ऑन दियर ऑन Your Nosher was on an entirely new path, which had appeared similar. I have no idea why the hell you are with us," the chick spoke. It was no surprise that the chick was named so by the band of boys. Christine was her real name. She was as beautiful as beauty could be defined. She dressed elegantly, stylish. Her eyes were faintly brown, the kind he had known. He patiently listened to her complaining banter. I simply don't understand. What was it that Bossy found so unique in you? I have never seen a guy as stupid as you. Nosher looked into her eyes. For a while, the resemblance making him off balance. But soon he gained sanity and asked with a straight face, "So what's the stupidest thing about me?" Now Christine was a bit shaken. No, I mean, go ahead, tell me what is it in me that repels you. Tell me, Christine. He insisted. Christine simply looked in the other direction. The flight took off. Sultan too had this thing with plane journeys. He created havoc. Freak, freak! I'm going to. Kill! Damn this adventure! Damn you all! Freak! This thing is going to take us all straight to heaven. How can you be so sure? Nosher asked. Sudhantu looked amused. What? I asked. How can you be so sure? Nosher repeated. Sure of what, you freaking good man? Sudhantu replied. Sure that we all land up in heaven after dying. I mean it's quite likely there isn't any hell or heaven at all. Headphones on. Anish was out of the conversation. Vasu was curiously observing the drama from a seat diagonally opposite. Christine was kind of fascinated. Take a deep breath and think of the worst thing that has ever happened to you. Nosher said with a calm and assertive tone. Are you out of your? Before Sudhantu could complete his sentence, Nosher put one of his hands on his blabbering mouth and the other on his eyes. Now think, the worst thing that has ever happened to you, he said authoritatively. The flying machine was up above the clouds when Nosher slowly took off his hand from Sudhantu's eyes and mouth. Freak! I want to kill that guy. He's the worst thing ever happened to me. Sutantu announced, oblivious to the fact who he was referring to, Anish was lost in his music. He had once freaking bone my undies and passed on to me without freaking washing them. And can you believe, you freaking good man, I wore it. Yuck! Freak! 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 Sutan to said Christine asked with disgust That's the worst that has happened to you Sutan to just gestured with a shrug of his shoulders 40 minutes into the flight everyone seemed set but Christine wasn't she had met him just once during the briefing with Bossy Bossy Parvez Billy Moria Her boss, Parvez wanted Nosher to be on this trip not only because of the Parsi connection, but because he believed 
his presence would add some texture to the show Christine started warming up to Nosher more out of curiosity to know what lay beneath the facade that she believed he was putting up he removed a picture from his ethnic jhola this is my family he said handing over the picture to her hesitatingly she took it it was a black and white image and there were almost as many people in the picture as many a colony could house he looked into her eyes almost hinting to ask for more getting uncomfortable with his gaze she asked why are you showing it to me you wanted to know more about me right he almost read her mind she thought he started telling her everything about him he never knew why she didn't resist any further Nosher narrates she would always say the park is for you park wing piece of chicken i hated the reference of body parts of a living thing with such anatomical words nevertheless i loved what she cooked especially the dum biryani i would eagerly await for the aroma from the aluminum container to escape out of the lid which was sealed with gluten the moment the dried half baked layers of flour would peel off the aromas of meat cooked in deliciously laced spices and basmati rice would slowly sneak out to reach my nostrils and then i would again hear those words the tang is for your dad and here you go placing both the wing pieces into my plate she would say bev pank na tukra tare mate cha both wing pieces are for you for a moment the repeated use of that word would give me visuals of the bird when it would have been alive and swinging its wings with glee but the aromas out of my mom's cooking skills were far more tempting than my guilt so i would happily enjoy the meal with him all the way to the liquor shop where country liquor which would stink like shit was sold within the small shop was a hidden small room behind an equally stinky curtain made of old discarded gunny bags i would enter in with him and sit at one of the tables while he gulped the liquid and ate peanuts i never wondered till a particular age Why on earth did my father take me along to a filthy place like that? As a child, I was simply amused by the narrow lane through small huts which led us to this place called Madhya's Den. The drunkards sometimes even fell in the gutter, which ran parallel to the narrow path. The only den I was aware of was that of a lion, and the fallen drunkards appeared to me like clowns trying to act funny. I held the same hand which had held the glass of that stinky filth and though I wasn't exactly sure but it felt as if I was guiding my father back home with my childlike intelligence and baby like resilience He was always a soft spoken person and during the entire journey and back from Madhya's den he would just speak to me once asking me if i wanted to buy something for me the pleasure of hearing his voice was enough for asking anything else we lived in a suburb which was nothing less than a countryside with open fields of radish and spinach toddy trees intermittently putting their swaying heads above the rest our cottage was modest in its structure as well as its interiors we had two chiku sapodilla trees and a plenty of mango trees around i even have faint memories of snakes passing by in the tall grass that would have grown during the rains our relatives lived mostly in the better part of the city at least they believed so 
but our cottage almost always was for celebrations like Navroz, the Parsi New Year. It was maybe my mom's culinary skills or my dad's large-heartedness. I couldn't make sense. Or maybe it could have been simply the beautiful surroundings our humble abode offered to those otherwise snobbish clan who thought my dad had done a mistake by renting a cottage in a place which had only tongas, horse carriages to reach there from the station. Noshir suddenly stopped. Why would have Nasher suddenly stopped speaking? Christine was wanting to know more. What is it in his childhood story that made Nasher suddenly stop? We will know in the coming episodes of Wednesdays with Papa and Mommy. Keep listening. to ban maska ban maska untold parsi stories of love heartbreak pain grief happiness laughter tears and triumph this is the non confirming parsi and you are listening to ban maska kisse kahaniyan bas stories of a parsi by a parsi for the world to listen